Hello, my name is Elise, and today, by popular demand, we will be talking even more about dialog boxes and the key chat syntax used within them. We will be covering the repeat command, optional words, the wildcard symbol, the forbidden word symbol and how it doesn't seem to work, uh, saving input for use in output, how to use variables, how to use subrules, tags, and the first command for better control of conversational flow. Here's my top file all set up and ready to use, and uh, because we're covering so much today, I'm going to be copy-pasting some of my lines in from a prepared file, but don't worry, it works just the same if you type them in yourself. So for the repeat command, let's say you have a rule like this. In this case, the, the robot will say jeepers if you say golly, or G or whiz, but not golly G or G whiz or any combination of them. In order to get the robot to recognize combinations of these words in the choice brackets, you use the word repeat after a caret just before the choice brackets here. All right. This means that any combination of these words in any order will fire this rule. Golly. Jeepers. Gee whiz. Jeepers. Gee golly whiz. Jeepers. Cool. So let's take a look at the option command now option brackets. Say you have a sentence like this, but you don't care if the robot recognizes hey robot how are you or hey how are you. In this case the word robot is optional and you can tell it so by putting these curly brackets around the optional word. So this way it'll recognize the sentence with that word in, that, in it at that place or not. Hey how are you? I am fine. Hey robot how are you? I am fine. You can also put choice brackets in here in the option brackets and give it a variety of words to recognize at that point in the sentence. Hey you, how are you? I am fine. Hey there, how are you? I am fine. You can also, if you don't care what it is that's recognized at this point in the sentence, you just want this rule to fire if it starts with hey and ends with how are you, you can put the wildcard symbol here. That stands for anything is, that is recognized here. Hey you sweet robot thing, how are you? I am fine. Now do note that for op with lots and lots of option brackets and wildcard symbols, um, the more you add to an input rule, the harder you're making the robot's job because the more things it has to look out for, uh, the more varieties and combinations of inputs that it has to match. So keep an eye on these, use them sparingly, and be aware that there's a higher likelihood of error when you're using them. Okay, there's one other symbol. If you've looked through the API at all, you might have seen this, uh, this uh, exclamation point symbol, which is the forbidden word symbol. That means that if the robot recognizes hey at the start of this input, it will not fire the rule. This word is forbidden in the input. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten this, uh, this forbidden word thing to work at all, despite having followed the API uh, to the word. So I'm not exactly sure how to get it to work, so I think that we should probably not use it um, until they either give a patch or document it correctly. So let's take a look at saving input for use in output. Supposing you've got a rule like this, it will recognize either cheese or chocolate here and then say, that sounds delicious. But we want it to say, yes, cheese sounds delicious, or yes, chocolate sounds delicious here. In that case, you save whatever it was that you said by putting this underscore before the choice brackets, and then whatever it is you said, you can have the robot spit back out in the output by using dollar sign one to refer to what it saved. I like chocolate. Yes, chocolate sounds delicious. You don't even have to use a choice bracket here, although it will improve your accuracy. If you just wanted to spit out whatever you said here, use the wildcard symbol and it will save whatever it recognizes. Again, this is a lot harder for the robot, so it might uh, spit back out something that you didn't actually say. I like coffee. Yes, coughing sounds delicious. So the robot likes coughing. That sounds good. Now, you can use this uh, 
in this input that was recognized and saved anywhere in the top file by storing it in a variable. This dollar sign one is just, uh, you can just refer to it in the output here. But if you want to use it anywhere else, you can make a variable with whatever name you want. In this case, I'm going to call it like, and then store dollar sign one in it. Then you can use it in rules like this. I can say, what do I like? And it'll say, you like whatever it is I said. And I can also clear the variable stored in like, um, and have the robot forget whatever it is that it's stored there, which I might want to do because it saves the variables between running of the program. I could run this program and then quit it and then run it again and it would still be saved, have saved the, the like that I gave it the first time. So sometimes you want to explicitly clear that variable and have the robot forget. I like tea. Yes, tea sounds delicious. What do I like? You like ski. Clear. Clear variable like. What do I like? It didn't say this output because it didn't have anything stored in this variable, so this output was not valid. Okay, let's take a look at another thing called user sub rules. If you saw the conversation tree tutorial at all, you'll know about making directed conversations. This is a way to do that in dialog boxes. You enter this, I suppose we can call it a conversation tree, by uh, triggering the first rule in it. Once this first rule has been triggered, these sub rules, these two sub rules at the first level, are now available. And if you say good or bad, um, it will respond with the appropriate output. Then, if you, for instance, say bad, now these two subrules of bad are available. But good is not available anymore because you've entered this scope. Let's give it a practical demonstration. What's up? Hi, how are you? No. Bad. That is sad. Would you like some chocolate? Yes. Maybe it will cheer you up. So you notice that when I said no, when I was in this scope, it didn't recognize, it didn't respond, because we hadn't entered this scope yet. But the thing is, the global scope is always available. So if I'm anywhere in this tree, um, and I say, hey, it will pop out of the tree and go straight to this rule. So the global scope is always available, but within a tree, only the specific level you're on that is active is available. That's useful to know. You can also use these types of trees in combination with proposals and whatnot. Let's give that a shot. So this proposal, what is your name? I'm going to access it only if I say good. I'm doing good. And I'm going to say next proposal to access it. That's one way of doing it. And then I'm going to have it save my name in a variable. And I can ask it or clear it. What's up? Hi, how are you? Good. I'm glad to hear it. What is your name? Elise. Nice to meet you, yeah, please. What is my name? Your name is here, please. Clear. Clear variable name. Cool. Now, supposing I have nothing stored in a uh, name, and I want it to say something like, I don't know here, instead of just skipping over it, if I ask it my name. For that, I'm going to use something called the first command. What I do is I set up some choice brackets, and then I put in the choices of output, but I'm going to put the one with a variable first, and I'm going to use this, put this command before the choice brackets. This command goes through the list in the choice brackets and says the first output that is valid. So this output, if there's nothing stored in the variable name, is invalid. It will skip over it and go to the next one. But if there is something stored in the variable name, this output is valid and it will just say this one. That's the handy part of the first uh, command. Let's try it. What is my name? I don't know. What's up? Hi, how are you? 
How are you? Good. I'm glad to hear it. What is your name? Elise. Nice to meet you, yeah, please. What is my name? Your name is here, please. So you can see how that works. Now, supposing I want it to actually ask me my name if it doesn't know. Then I can jump straight over to this proposal, and to do that, I'm going to use a tag. A tag is just like a name for a rule that you can use to jump to it or refer to it anywhere else in the file. So this percent sign says this is the tag for the rule for this proposal rule. You can actually put it on any other rule, like a user rule, and it will jump to that rule's output and just go from there if you refer to it elsewhere in the file. Here's how you refer to it elsewhere in the file. I'm going to use a command called go to to jump over to ask name. There are a few other thing, ways to refer to tags as well, and you'll have to look at the API to find out about them. And in fact, instead of using this uh, next proposal command, I'm going to use the go to command here as well. That's a little more specific because it'll go to just this proposal. If we have lots of proposals, the next proposal command will change every time you hit it. Let's try it. Clear. Clear variable name. What is my name? I don't know what is your name. Elise. Nice to meet you, yeah, please. What is my name? Your name is here, please. So that is pretty handy. Um, these are a lot of things that you can do with the syntax, but we've barely scratched the surface. Um, so again, you should really go and check out the API, the syntax reference for KeyChat on the uh, Aldebaran website. There is a lot more to learn and a lot you can do with this sort of thing. So thank you for listening.